Hi folks, this is College Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 2.1. Number one, we're given the U.S. unemployment rate was 5% in January 2008 and 7.7% .7 in January 2009. In part A, we're asked to find a linear function which fits th fit these data and we're asked to use the number of years since January 2008 as the independent variable and the unemployment rate as the dependent variable. Okay, so let's remember what that means, independent, dependent. When we first started talking about functions, we talked about y equals f of x. So here x was the independent variable and y was the dependent variable. And what we did is plotted the points x comma y. So in this example, we're asked to use t, the number of years since January 2008, as the independent variable, and the unemployment rate, u, as the dependent variable. So we're looking at uh, u equals some function of t, which means we're going to plot points t comma u. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, t is the number of years since January 2008. So in January 2008, well that's zero years since January 2008, so this gives us t equals zero. And at that point the unemployment rate was 5%, so we're going to let u equal 5. In January 2009, well that's exactly one year later, so that's t equals 1, and the rate was 7.7 percent so we'll call that u equals 7.7 .7. so if I want to visualize this data at t equals 0 I've got 5 percent And then at t equals 1, I've got 7.7%. Oops. Missed it. Okay, so I've got the point 0, 0.05.5 and the point 1, excuse me, 0, 0,5. And then the point 1, 7.7. .7. Okay, so these two points determine a line, and so that's what A is talking about. I want to find the linear function that fits these data points. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I can find the slope. The slope is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. Well, in this case, it's the change in the u values over the change in the time values. So I take the second u value. 7.7 .7 minus my first u value 5 divided by 1 minus 0 and so this gives me 2.7 now even though it doesn't ask us to uh, do so let's go ahead and interpret what this slope means in terms of this situation this 2.7 we can think of as 2.7 over 1 that's a percentage per year. And so since it's a positive slope, that means unfortunately uh, the U.S. unemployment rate is increasing at a rate of 2.7 percent per year. Okay, at least that's based on this data. Okay, now that we have the slope and we have two points on the line, we can go ahead and find the equation of the line. Uh, in class we usually use the point-slope formula, which looks something like this. Well, here x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, m is the slope, and x naught y naught is a point on the line. Well, we have to remember we're using t's and u's. t is the independent variable, it's acting like the x. u is the dependent variable, it's acting as the y. So I'm going to go ahead and oops, use the uh, u then as dependent variable, u equals the m, which is 2.7, that's our slope, 
And instead of x minus x naught, I'm going to use t minus t naught. t naught is the t coordinate of a point on the graph. So I'm going to use t equals 0 for this. And then the corresponding u coordinate on that point is 5. And so I get u equals 2.7t plus 5. Now those of you that are fans of the slope-intercept formula will notice that this gives you the slope-intercept right away. Um, you could Id identify quickly this would be the B in the slope-intercept form. So no matter how you slice it, this is our linear model. If I want to use function notation, we would write U of T is 2.7T plus 5. So that'll do it for part A. Okay, in part B, we're asked to find a reasonable applied domain for this, uh, for this model, for this function we found in A. So since we're giving, uh, since T is defined to be the number of years since January 2008, that tells us that one restriction we've got is T has to be bigger than or equal to zero. Now, can we think of any other uh, practical considerations. Well, uh, certainly the unemployment rate uh, can't be anything higher than 100%. Right? You can't have 150% employment. So the other thing we would need is we would need that U of t would have to be less than or equal to uh, 100%. We would also need the U of t to be bigger than or equal to zero as well, but we know from our graph that t bigger than or equal to zero is going to make sure that's true as well. So this is the only thing we really have to solve for here. This is less than or equal to 100. Subtract the 5 off both sides. 2.7t is less than or equal to 95. Then I'm going to divide both sides carefully by the 2.7. Why carefully? We do have an inequality. Mercifully, the 2.7 is a positive number, so when I divide both sides of an inequality by a positive number, I don't need to change the sense of the inequality. So I get t is less than or equal to 95 over 2.7, and we can go off to the calculator, and we can approximate what that's going to be. So 95 divided by 2.7. Uh, we'll say is less than or equal to 35.18. Alright, so a reasonable domain, a reasonable applied domain for this problem would be that. Okay, now in part C, we're asked to use our model to predict the unemployment rate in January 2010. Okay, so as I mentioned before, a lot of these, uh, a lot of linear models are used, especially in calculus, to do prediction. So how do I use this to predict the unemployment rate in January 2010? Well, in January 2010, corresponds to what t value? Well, January 2010 is two years after January 2008, so this would correspond to t equals 2. And so I look at u of 2, and everywhere I see a t, I'm going to substitute in the 2. So I multiply this out, I'm going to get a 4, uh, plus a 1.4 is a 5.4, plus 5, this gives me 10.4, that corresponds to an unemployment rate of 10.4%. And for those who are curious, the actual retail unemployment rate uh, was 9.7%. Is that a good estimate? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. I'll let you think about that. But that'll do it for number one.